and uh, and and from my pers it's a personal view, uh, I would say that I'm not an advocate of one software. Uh, prefer to others, but clearly are for me has some advantages in terms of in term of uh, transparency. When I say transparency, you, you have some. First of all, it's an open source, which is absolutely great. And potentially you could you could you can develop tools which can uh, improve the transparency of the analysis, the decision uh, making models from the perspective of the outside world. I, I think that if people were using R um, in the HTA appraisal process, it would give potentially the the an opportunity to show how the decisions were made by NICE, how it was developed by the companies and so on. We could potentially have some kind of uh, an increased interaction between uh, the patients, uh, the clinicians, and, and the decision makers. So it's probably slightly ambitious for me, but this would be probably the added value of R above other, other, uh, of, other, other so software. So this is possibly the, 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 the one answer to the second question. The third question is, what shall we do to promote the use of R? And I, I find it quite difficult to answer this question. But uh, I think the straightforward uh, forward, uh, uh, answer would be, first of all, in the academic field or in the training, if we are convinced that R has some functionalities which would add some value to the HT decision making process, R should probably be promoted and probably more widely used. But also from our perspective, from the perspective of nice scientific advice, having a pilot with the company showing the value of R for industry, for the patients, for the clinician would be something which would uh, provide evidence that R has some value, has some added value, or contributes to the value of uh, the HTA process. And this is, this is, I think, the, the, the key challenges in the future. We, we say that we want to use R, please show the value of this software above existing technologies or existing solutions. Uh, but at the moment, uh, there is, I, I do not see any willingness from industry to, uh, to move in that direction. Thank you very much, Francois. Um, Benedictus, do you want to go next? I don't know if you have slides or if you want to just um, give us your initial thought. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John Luca. And um, yeah, my thoughts are um, aligned with, uh, with the previous uh, speakers and uh, the other members of the panel. Um, what I see is that Excel can do many things that R can do. Um, it was not built explicitly for this need. Um, but qualitatively, it offers uh, the, the, the same features that are desired. We have accessibility, transparency, reproducibility. It is difficult to say that uh, uh, Excel uh, doesn't have a transparency. All the cells uh, and calculations can be traced and examined, and it is fully reproducible. Um, but um, I can see also an argument that transparency is not about only uh, tracing the cells, uh, but you know when we have very long convoluted formulas, uh, it can be tricky to understand exactly what we're looking at. And in some situations, uh, transparency might be improved in R, but qualitatively, I think that both tick the boxes. Um, the, the, the point that I wanted to, uh, to bring for discussion was that um, in some cases where investigations may be restricted by software, there is a risk that um, alternative approaches uh, involving simplifying assumptions uh, may be used. And um, uh, we need to ask ourselves whether that might compromise accuracy and reliability of the results. We should be focusing on the right method rather than the software. Uh, so, uh, and also from our perspective, uh, and um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm a representative of the consulting industry. Uh, we have also seen that um, when there is an increased um, complexity in the model, 
uh, Excel requires a greater investment of resources uh, into serving these needs than what it would do to switch into R. So uh, th that is something that um, uh, is an interesting uh, angle uh, to consider. I don't see um, uh, a, a clear reason uh, not to use R in all cases, but neither do I for using R in all cases. So, um, uh, but I can see that, you know, if there is increased complexity uh, required, then R could provide uh, more appropriate solutions uh, and faster solutions. Um, when a simpler modeling approach is sufficient, then I would still have benefits, the benefits that have been discussed throughout the, the whole showcase. It provides a unified interface for integrating the statistical analysis with modeling, parameter estimation, and visuals. Um, but also uh, an important thing for me to, to, to bring for discussion is uh, the need for validation of our packages. And that is um, a general point for R rather than R for using uh, in HTA. Um, we need to have improved documentation. The, the, it has improved over the last years, but still there are situations where we can we may not be able to find formulas for specific packages uh, and really understand uh, what the method does. Uh, and that causes a lot of delays because when we want to implement it, we will need to replicate it and make sure what we're actually doing. And sometimes we may even replicate it with Excel to make sure that we are doing the right thing. And that sort of defeats the purpose. So um, uh, these were uh, the, um, the, the key points that um, uh, you know, um, reflect my, my views. Uh, I realized that I didn't introduce myself properly. I'm Venetus Kavitanex from Avidera. Uh, I've been uh, working in the consulting world uh, for the last six years. Previously, I was for more than 10 years in academia. I am a statistician by training, so I have been using R. Um, it's not the only software that uh, I am using. I see many advantages in R, uh, particularly when it comes to simulations that other uh, software can do, but it may not be the most um, easier way of doing it. Uh, I would be a supporter of R, but uh, not necessarily as the, you know, uh, recommended as the software that uh, um, can do more. Um, it's a matter of um, uh, deciding what software is most appropriate and most efficient given the, the problem that we have to solve. Thank you very much. Um, I think there are a couple of question or comments to the panel from the chat, which I'll read out loud in a second so that everybody sees them or, or listens to them. Um, just in response to the last two sort of opening statements, um, uh, again, I'm very aware of my own biases, uh, but I think something that you both, Francois and uh, Benedito said, um, has a parallel when I talk to people about being Bayesian versus not being Bayesian. Sometimes there's a and understanding that being, doing a Bayesian model is a lot more complicated than doing the frequentist counterpart. And I think that that has a lot of truth if the baseline for the model is very, is very low. If you have to do a simple linear regression, then I think that there is a point in saying that maybe, you know, with lots of data, there's no point in going fully Bayesian, having to learn bugs. That would be a lot of extra work for no real advantage. Maybe if you use like vague priors, things don't really change numerically, so why bother? But I think, and, and you were mentioning something like that, Benedictus, when the model complexity goes up and up and up and up, and you have to go with more realistic kind of models that have complexity, then there's no way around it. No way that a frequentist model is simple. You have to do more investigation. The model becomes more complicated and it could be a perfectly valid model. So, you know, does it, does it, there's an element of preference in many cases, whether you want to do Bayesian or frequentist. And if you do a very good frequentist model, it'll be, or just as good. Um, you never heard it from me. Obviously, a Bayesian model would be better, but um, uh, but the point is um, that that goes the same for Excel and R or any other software. If the model is really simple, then you know if you have a single spreadsheet with a few formula, then probably there's no need to go into any other software. Everything can be self-contained. But when the model becomes more complicated, then you have a very complex survival analysis with extrapolation, missing data then 
at that stage, like you were saying, I think maybe there's a lot of value in, in going to different softwares, um, which is probably something to, to, to bear in mind. And building on a, a couple of the questions, and then I'll, I'll leave you guys discuss in the panel. So one point was about uh, whether, uh, for example, the whole community or maybe NICE uh, could approve certain packages, could have a process whereby they are tested and uh, we as a community become happy with their performance. And then again, we don't necessarily need to commend the use of these packages instead of anything else, but at least they are stamped and we know that they work. So this is the first point perhaps from, uh, from the audience for a, for a bigger discussion. And then there's another comment which says, submit a model in Excel to a nice appraisal which takes 20 plus hours to run a PSA um, or several minutes for deterministic, interferes with the appraisal process as it makes it impossible to review properly. Does the panel agree that pure speed increase in even basic R implementation is a major advantage when models are complex? And I'll leave the panel to ponder on these two points. I, I can answer, I can answer Sophia's comments. Um, uh, John, okay, if, if I may. I think so, Sophia's, Sophia's comment is, is extremely relevant. She, she's, she's absolutely right. And of course, she's, she's, uh, she's very well, um, she's very well aware of, of, uh, of, of this issue herself. Uh, Having said that, the fact is uh, the use of a given software, to my knowledge, has never interfered in a TA to the point that the TA had to be uh, to be uh, to be cancelled or had to be um, adjusted because of the use of the software. And again, and uh, it goes back to the second issue: if you assume that uh, you need to use another another software. Uh, a, a more advanced statistical software to uh, to uh, to do your economic analysis. To me, the fundamental question is: What are the advantages of R over Stata over SAS? Uh, if you want to do complex mapping, um, you've got some Stata um, uh, scripts which are which are which have been developed to, to do these mappings. Uh, Again, the industry standard in terms of statistical software is fast because they have a lot of expertise in using this software. So where I'm, the point on which I'm, I'm, I'm struggling or, or I think we should try to answer is if a company has to use uh, a statistical software for very good reasons, um, performance, um, statistical models, whatever, why choosing R over other solutions? And I don't have any clear, I don't have any clear solution, but the issue of, of transparency, because R is an open source, R uh, is being used by a lot of uh, academia and so on, and this would be, I think personally, a major step forward to uh, increase transparency with the patients and clinicians. Just to quickly follow on and then I'll, I'll shut up and let the other members of the panel respond. But there's a follow up from the audience that says SAS is expensive, R is free, Stata is also expensive, which I agree with. And also there are two more um, sort of levels perhaps to this. Because R is free, it can be easily available to, for example, uh, low and middle in income countries who are coming into the world of health economic evaluation and HDA. And the other thing is that perhaps, uh, and again, this is my bias and my uh, ignorance of other areas, but maybe in, in the R community, we have also this extra community working in our field who's willing to create this sort of environment for different packages, which may make it an advantage. It's true, but for companies, John Lucas, we have to recognize that price is not an issue. They, they will never most of the companies will never uh, use R over Stata or SAS because of the price of the license. It, for the companies, it's, it's, I never heard this as being an issue for, for uh, this and the company. So I, 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 I really have some, a lot of personal sympathy for your points concerning the uh, other countries and so on. But for the, 
for the majority of the companies, and you know that 95% or 99% of the TAs are currently, were currently uh, uh, submitted by, by major pharmaceutical companies, price is not an issue. What are the other members of the panel think? Can I offer a comment? Of course. Uh, Don Luca, the, um, I'm a little bit worried about the, 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 the discussion about complexity because I think one of, one of the principles of modeling is a sort of Occam's razor principle, which we, we should keep our models as simple as possible. Um, and I don't, th uh, there are there are there can be good reasons why models should be complex, and one of them might be uh, interactions between individuals. Uh, I, I I'm certainly uh, uh, not an expert on agent-based modelling, but I don't know whether agent-based modelling is feasible in R, for example. And so I want to really come back to the horses for courses argument that uh, Liz put forward, which is um, it's it's kind of difficult to be prescriptive to say you must use a particular software package for for everything there are going to be situations where some where some software packages are more suitable than others and maybe we should focus in on when is a particular uh, software package uh, most suitable for a particular problem i know for I, I think there are many examples of simple models that are perfectly uh, easy and transparent to show and implement in Excel. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and likewise, I think there are many uh, examples of software uh, implementations uh, where Excel would really struggle. Um, uh, Liz mentioned uh, discrete event simulation. Any kind of patient level simulation in model, uh, modeling in Excel is going to be painful. Uh, and there, there are better packages. Um, so I don't think just, be, I mean, R, R being uh, open source and free is, is obviously a big advantage, but that's not the only criteria, I think, for judging whether a particular software package should be used. I want to bring in Ed Wilson's comment earlier as well, which is that I think poor examples exist in all platforms and I believe there are poor examples of programming in R and Absolutely. one of the tensions I see uh, and I think it was you know I, I enjoyed Sam's presentation earlier um, uh, is because I, I can see a tension between where it's particularly in a script-based language where where the those people who desire efficiency are going to take uh, 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 the some of the some of the routes to efficiency are going to be at the expense of transparency uh, for for somebody who's less familiar with the soft software package and I think we saw some of that today and I saw and and I really appreciated Sam's suggestions for trying to improve efficiency while keeping the transparency there because I think there are examples of our uh, models that have been submitted to NICE where they're not transparent and they do take a long time to run still. Um, so I'll stop there. Thank you. Uh, Liz and uh, um, Benedictus, any thoughts on this last part? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as far as I'm aware, NICE does accept uh, R based models, but it's not clear to me. And, and Rachel Evans has just made a comment in the chat about the fact that uh, back a couple of years ago at, at one of the face to face meetings, Diffrig Hughes gave a presentation about R for NICE. Um, and it's not clear to me how many of the ERGs are actually able to assess NICE. Uh, uh, assess our based models, uh, you know, which ones have that expertise and which don't. And I think companies are going to be nervous about using R for their submissions until they've seen a model go through NICE or other HTA agency and have seen it be, uh, you know, ha go through the whole process and get the kind of uh, acceptance and reception that they would want to see for their particular treatments. You know, we know that companies can be a little bit um, conservative with a small C in that respect. You know, they, they want 
to make sure that uh, you know somebody else did a, a petition survival model so I want the petition survival model because it worked last time and I think you know it's going to take a little bit of time